Whenever I see an effect like this one that I want to try to recreate, the first thing I might do is strip away the noise. Mentally, I try to deconstruct everything I see going on to get a quick idea of what I'm up against. Not a perfect understanding, but one that's just enough to lead me to a good starting point. In this particular case, I know I need to reference the position of the mouse, so I'm going to add a mouse move listener. Each time the mouse moves in the Y direction, I need a way to translate that into rotation. Since the mouse move listener gives me the Y position of the mouse, I can divide that position by the height of the container to convert it to a decimal. If we multiply that decimal by a given number of degrees, we can transfer that value to the rotation of the card. But the rotate property's default axis is the Z axis, which isn't exactly the type of rotation that we're looking for. Fortunately, we can change the axis by specifying the correct one. To make our card spin faster, we can simply increase the number of degrees. Looking back at the original for a moment, I'm noticing we still have a couple of issues. The first being that the origin point for our rotation is located in the center of the card. In order to more closely mirror Linear's version, we need to shift that origin up to the top. It still feels like there's something missing. I think maybe we're lacking some depth to our animation. I know it has something to do with perspective, but how exactly does that work? Huh, so setting a perspective value is effectively controlling how far away the viewer is from the object. In other words, when you're up really close, changes in things like rotation will be a lot more noticeable than if you were further away. It's not often you come across such an impeccable bug, but when you do, yeah, uh, I, I just couldn't help myself, that's it.